Today we'll be animating a familiar instant transport effect uh, from one of my favorite sci-fi TV shows. So uh, you can download my images in Gumroad, link is below. So let's click on the new screen, we'll pick widescreen, and then we'll click the add button here and add photos. And if they're in their camera roll, just go ahead and select all three of them here and click add. Okay, notice that all three images are on one track, but we'll deal with that in a second. But first, let's extend this timeline here. Click on properties, and I like to make it about 20 seconds. That seems to be a good length for this. And let's get back to this track here. We want to pick the human one and just drag it up to the track above it. Okay, now we're going to fill uh, this track with both of these background scenes. So long press the edge of it here and just drag it to where you want it to end. Okay, and I think about nine seconds here is good. And then we want this second scene to stay a little longer, so we're gonna give it the majority of the time. Again, long press here, and just drag it all the way to the end. Okay, and that looks good. Okay, now that we have our background set, let's go ahead and resize everything. Just make sure you have these little red handles and just start resizing it until it's the size that you like. And notice that I'm adjusting some things just to make sure everything is level with each other. Now let's go to this uh, human track and we're gonna long press and fill duration. We're not really going to mess with this at all. He's going to remain the same, just you won't be able to see him at certain times. But go ahead and resize him. And again, you can use a little tap of the handle and use that curve function just to make sure he's standing straight up. And you could just quickly double check, make sure he fits well in both of these scenes here. Okay, looks good. So now let's make the first scene, the background a little blurry. Click on filter and Gaussian blur and just make it 1%. We don't want it too blurry. We want to make sure we know what the background is. 1%, there you go. All right, now it's time for the special effects. Let's go to the human or character track. We'll call it character track from now on. And uh, let's click on add and track. This will be right above the character track. And click on the drawing tool. And I like to use the luminance glimmer brush. And we're gonna use yellow. I think that's the original color they used in the original series. So let's click on the drawing tool again and just start making a circular shape around here. Okay, and don't go crazy. Don't do too much where you can't see the character, but also fill in these sides, the corners and everywhere around the character because we're going to do something with this later. Okay, that looks great. So now let's go down to this new track we just drew and let's long press on this sliver here and fill duration. Okay, we'll call this uh, beam two. Now, why beam two? Because we're going to duplicate this. So long press and click on track options. And now duplicate. Okay, now we'll call that beam one. So let's go ahead and uncheck beam one right now. Now on the beam two track, let's click the playhead and we wanna rotate this clockwise. So click move, move and scale. And now we want to click live perform and click on the little tab here and start rotating this very quickly so that it's rotating through the whole animation. Okay, that should do it. Okay, quickly swipe to the left to take a look. And that looks great. Okay, now let's go to beam two and uncheck that one now. Okay, now click on the check mark for beam one. And we're gonna do the same thing, but counterclockwise. All right, so make sure that's selected still and just go counterclockwise through the whole animation. Okay, let's swipe left just to check it out and click stop. 
All right, let's go to the BM2 track, check it again, long press, and we want to go to mask and clipping mask. Let's do the same thing for the BM1 track, long press, mask, clipping mask. And notice everything is contained on this carrot. Okay, okay, let's now uncheck the BM1 track here, and let's go to the BM2 track, click on the playhead, and click filter and opacity. We're gonna bring it all the way down to zero to turn off this beam for now. Now go a few seconds in, uh, just where you want the beam to start, and click on the playhead here and just drag it down. You'll see this little keyframe, make sure it's white, and we wanna keep it at zero because this is where we want the process to start. Okay, we don't want it gradually uh, appearing, but we want it to start from that point. So drag the playhead now, few seconds here just so you can see the effect a little longer click on filter and opacity and bring it all the way to 100 percent and you could just quickly test this out just by dragging the playhead back and forth you can see it's starting the process so that looks great now we want to click on the character we're going to have him disappear now so click uh, where you would think that he would start disappearing and click on the playhead, filter, opacity, and we're gonna leave this here. I just wanted to show you, but make sure the keyframe here is white. That's where, again, the process of him disappearing will start. Just make sure he's completely gone before the other background pops up. Okay, make sure we're on the keyframe here. Click on it, make sure it's white, and bring the opacity all the way to zero and swipe to the left and we can watch him disappear there you go now we're going to have him reappear on this planet with the second background so go to the character track and click on the playhead here and click filter and opacity again this is where the process will start so we're not going to change it at all but go maybe about one or two seconds Drag the playhead down and make the keyframe white and bring the opacity all the way to 100%. Now he's reappeared. Again, making sure this keyframe is white, that's the ending keyframe. Let's go back up to the Beam 2 track. We have to deactivate this. So click on the playhead and make sure that the filter and opacity is still at 100%. Again, starting the process and just go one second or less to filter and opacity and now bring it all the way down okay let's not forget uh, the track for beam one let's click on the checkbox and we're basically going to do the same thing that we did for beam two track we're going to kind of eyeball where is these keyframes for the opacity changes uh, because we also want to do it for this beam one track. So let's click on filter, opacity, and we're going to turn it off just like we did on beam two track. Okay, and let's do that at the beginning here, opacity and 0% as well. And you might notice that my keyframe for the B1 track is a little off from B2. That's just because I was sitting a little further away, so my perspective was off. So just continue following the little keyframes on the beam two track here we'll raise it to 100 percent again okay now check the beam two track and let's take a look okay so let's go to the second scene kind of do the same thing so we're going to keep doing the same thing make sure you have the playhead here click on uh, filter again it matches with the beam two track and make sure that we just leave it at 100% here. Okay, now just go uh, about half a second or so or a second. Again, click on the playhead and here click filter and opacity and bring it down to zero. Okay, let's just do a couple more finishing touches. Go back to the background and remember we blurred the background just a little bit. Well, now when he uh, transports out of here we want to refocus on the background so just uh, go about where he's disappearing and you can see it's pretty blurry click on the playhead 
right here. Okay, click on filter and Gaussian blur. And now bring that back to zero. That will make the background more in focus now. It's very subtle, but if you look, you can see it become more in focus. Let's do the same for the second background. Filter, Gaussian blur, and we'll make the background a little blurry when he appears. All right, this was a challenging one, but thanks for sticking with me. Let's watch it in full screen with four fingers. And there you have it. I hope this level up tutorial can help you increase your skills using Procreate Dreams. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please check out my links below like my children's book and online shop. Click on these videos to continue leveling up with Procreate Dreams. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.